time to time it's going to be necessary to lubricate and clean the inside of the winch. Uh, using it around chainsaws allows some fine sawdust to get in there. When fine sawdust mixes with grease, it gets real gooey. And one day you're probably going to be mounting it up and giving it a little spin and it's going to feel sticky. When that happens, that's the time to uh, take it apart and see what's inside, clean it up and re-lubricate it. To do that, you first need to remove the retaining screw that's in the bottom of the handle socket. So you got to reach down there with a straight bladed screwdriver, back that screw out counterclockwise to break it loose. When, you, when you're backing the screw out after you've had it out a ways, just lift this socket up uh, and hold it up and then finish backing the screw out. And once you get the screw out all the way, take this handle socket and set it next to the winch or set it on your bench vertically. Uh, there's a tapered washer in there and the screw and if you capsize the thing it's just a little bit of a trick to uh, get it all straightened out again. You'll save yourself a lot of trouble by doing that. This big top cap comes off and then the whole winch, drum and peeler arm will lift straight off the drum, off those roller bearings that are in there. You'll notice it's really wide at the base that gives it a, a really solid foundation, uh, you know, just like the big buttress roots on a tree. There's no, no bending or no pulling that thing off of the plate. It's designed to be very, very solid. Uh, the material for the, the winch frame is a very tough aluminum bronze alloy. It actually has more tensile strength than cast iron. It's very strong and durable. And with that wide base, there's no way you're going to be able to pull that winch off the plate or uh, bend anything in there. It's really really a sturdy structure. Uh, it's a good idea when you disassemble things to uh, get some Allen head wrenches, uh, Allen wrenches and make sure all of these screws are very snug. The bearings need to be removed. You can take this thrust washer, lift the whole thing apart, take that off, and the, uh, the bearings will need to be cleaned off. You can use a paper towel and just wipe like crazy or you can spray a little carburetor cleaner or some kind of solvent on there and then wipe it off. So you, this big bearing journal needs to be wiped off, this thrust area needs to be wiped off, and all the gears. You'll, it will require you to turn things a little bit. You can turn this pinion gear and expose all sides of the other gears. So you've got this pinion gear and then this idler gear here. So you get those all cleaned up and re-grease and put a nice thin coat of grease on. It's also important inside the drum there's the rack gear, all the teeth that do the actual turning of the drum. It's crucial to get those clean and also the inside bearing journal that's on the inside of the drum. Once you've got that clean, everything gets a light coating of grease and reassembly is the reverse process of taking it apart. First the bearings go back on. You've got the thrust washer on the bottom, the first roller bearing, the spacer ring and the second roller bearing. And the, it doesn't which order you put the bearings on, they're both the same. Next the drum goes on, just drops right on over the top. And notice it didn't drop down all the way, you have to turn it a little to, mat, to mesh the gears in there, it will drop together. Then we have to put the peeler arm on, and it's actually necessary to lift the drum up a little bit, because this finger on the peeler arm has to go between the two jaws of the self-tailor. And the peeler arm has to be aligned so it's at about between 3 and 4 o'clock on the clock face. And if it, where the plate is marked top, if you consider that 12 o'clock on the clock face, the peeler arm has to be aligned at 4 o'clock and it fits on the spline. That's very important. Once you've got that, you're ready to put the top cap back on, finish the assembly by setting the handle socket back in the hole, and spinning it a little bit so it wants to drop onto the shaft down below and uh, but you continue to hold it up a little bit because that align keeps the screw aligned in the bottom of the handle socket keeps it straight once you get that screw started you can drop the handle socket in and tighten it up and to get it tight enough it may be necessary to mount this up on a tree wrap a rope around it have the end of the rope tied somewhere put it through the self-tailor so the rope is held on both ends and uh, then tighten the screw because turning the screw in the 
handle socket also, once you get it close to being tight, it starts turning the drum. So you have to be able to hold that drum somehow. And the easiest way to do it is with the rope. That's it. And if you should probably take your winch apart, depending on how often you use it, at least once a year.